Welcome. Time for just another quick update, show you the progress that's been made thus far. Um, in the last video, we went over the fact that we've re relocated the charge controllers and ran um, all the wiring that we could to get the flex conduit. Uh, we have our main uh, wiring panel here with the APB shunt trip breaker. Uh, bus bars for interconnection from the battery feed from the charge controllers as well as the battery bank itself and the inverter tie into the bus bars inside the cabinet. Up top were the 80 amp disconnect breakers for the DC side of the or battery side of the charge controllers. Uh, over here you can see that we have our Batrium mounted uh, with its own uh, company breaker and also a uh, DC to DC converter. And what this is, is that the, we're running a uh, 48 volt battery bank. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking that um, transformer there and taking 48 volts and cutting it down to 24 volts. And we'll, it has two outputs. We'll use one output to run the Batrium and the other output will be used for the shunt trip. Uh, because this particular shunt trip, as with most ABB breakers, uh, supports 24 volts DC or AC to actually trip the breaker. Uh, and although, uh, and it has been noted on the forums, that you can use a resistor uh, in line with the Batrium uh, in order to achieve your 24 volts to um, activate your shunt trip breaker. And some individuals have even posted they they go ahead and use straight up 48 volts. Uh, it's not a solution I wanted to get into. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Lithium Solar, that's his channel, uh, showed that he used this exact breaker and he provided a link uh, to where to order it from and uh, it works out quite well. Uh, it'll uh, give us our 24 volts, which the chump trip breaker is rated for, and also will allow us to power the Batrium, all from one nice little clean a unit because as this uh, will be basically you know not basically but running your battery management system which is keeping an eye on all of your equipment and make sure that things get uh, treated properly batteries get uh, uh, are doing what they're supposed to do and in worst case scenario get disconnected in case of a fault you want nice clean uh, stable power uh, going to this unit, which this little DC to DC converter will uh, provide for us. Uh, and again, there was the shunt trip breaker, or not shunt trip, but the uh, uh, shunt, DC shunt, that the Batrium will use to monitor the amount of current going in and out of the battery. Uh, we still got a lot of wiring to do, but uh, that is the little module that the long mons uh, we'll uh, daisy chain in and out of. And over here, you can see that we have our first string of batteries wired up at this point. And these were the same 180 amp hour cells you saw in a previous video. Now I'm using this 2 aught cable uh, to make jumpers between the batteries because uh, nobody had the actual bus bars for uh, for these particular cells. Anybody that had them, the company that manufactures these cells, apparently won't let them sell the bus bars without selling a battery. Uh, and since I got these batteries used from Battery Hookup, they were out of a electric VW Beetle conversion. Uh, when they used it, they had created their own custom bus bars. So I didn't want to go down the route of getting copper bars and having to drill everything. And I had plenty of this 2 aught gauge cable uh, and these connector ends. So we just want this route. And you can see the long mons have been installed on each battery in such a way that you can still get the cable um, in between. That's why they're on the edges here because they gave enough space to get the cabling in and out and signal cabling uh, between each battery. Each battery has its own long mons. So you're looking at 16 long mons on this string. Uh, eventually, we will have other videos coming out uh, that will feature uh, at least 32 more cells. So two more strings of 16 using Fortune 100 batteries. They will all each have their own long mon, as you see here. Uh, and if you're going to be doing, or 
especially dealing with what I found out on the on the Patreon. And one of the issues I'm running into, it's not an issue, it's more just information, is that uh, these terminal uh, connectors are accepts a very small pin or a very strand, th a thin strand of wire. One of the items that I picked up and saw another individual use online, which I think is a absolute must when dealing with a Batrium, is a little connector kit that connects the, the crimps on these ferrules that you see here. Uh, this kit you can get on Amazon. And we grab the actual kit here. Pardon my shaky cam video. But don't worry, this is the plastic container. I realize I'm setting it on top of the battery. There you go. 1,200 piece assortment set. Of these little ferrule connectors. And it came with the crimp tool. It's a universally sized crimp tool. It's not one of the ones that has a, a single jaw with multiple slots and you got to line up the right one and crimp it. That, uh, that little crimp opening in there is dynamic and will size itself based on the ferrule that you're using. But uh, this little kit's been nice. Uh, we've been able to go through and uh, make ferrule ends or crimp ferrules on all the connectors that need to go into the Batrium. As you can see from the power feeds going in here, as well as another set of power leads there for the shunt trip, the uh, uh, loop around for the power feed here that comes out of our breaker, uh, the ferrule that was clipped onto the input of the DC breaker you see here, but it's, so it's a very very useful uh, kit. I strongly suggest it, especially if you're going to be dealing with a Batrium or dealing with something that has very small terminal screws that you get yourself one of these kits. It makes it makes for a very nice uh, terminated uh, solid connection. Uh, we even took the fat, we even took this kit and redid the connectors on the back of the um, Outback uh, DC monitor. Uh, since it has this terminal block on the back of it, we took all the wiring out and used ferrules and cleaned that up as well. In case you were curious what a Radian uh, Outback uh, DC cabinet looks like on the inside there. And what you have is your main DC breakers here. You were a FlexNet DC monitor. If you have that, that is an option. Um, you don't necessarily need it to run this inverter, but they do provide a spot for it in case you do have one. And what this is, this is Outback's version of a battery monitor. Uh, so with that being said, you saw the shunt for the Batrium in the box. We also added another shunt in line uh, with the negative battery cable. For that guy right there, that's the one the Victron uses. That's the one that the Victron uses. And we're also going to use it to um, use with the um, Outback inverter or DC monitor. And you can see the two bus bars that we have in the back there. This is where the strings of batteries will terminate. And you can see the cables that we have up there now are actually what's running up into the enclosure that you saw earlier. As well as we have feeds coming off here, uh, that power, that uh, DC to DC converter that you saw up there at the top as well as the uh, battery monitors themselves uh, to be able to monitor the overall uh, battery bank voltage tied directly off of these plates here. Because uh, uh, a lot of the shunts, uh, the battery monitors, they want the positive cable as close to the battery as you can get it so you can monitor the actual battery bank voltage and not the voltage of something that you know, may be in line with the battery bank. They want to see the actual batteries themselves. And we did take things a little step further. This power supply, the way it's wired in, it gets its negative just after the shunt. 
This way we can still monitor the amount of current being pulled out of the battery, including what the batrium is using via this power supply. But you'll notice that this connector is before the breaker. So the event that something happens and this breaker has to trip and the battery bank gets disconnected, the batrium will still have power. That way we can monitor what's going on even though the rest of the system will be disconnected from batteries. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the update now. We're going to continue to press forward. We'll get the long mons wired in and finish the setup on the batrium here. And then we'll, we'll come back when we're a little bit further down the road. Thank you much.